Hey guys, William B. D. Brown here doing an update uh, on our mealworm breeding project. So we've had lots of success. We've bred a few hundred mealworms out, and um, this is our first round of home mealworms. Um, so we will be able to perpetuate our colonies uh, by continuing to breed out our little, our little beetles, uh, which will breed out these little mealworm larvae, uh, which will pupate and uh, stay in a little pupil, uh, uh, pupae form. Uh, for a little bit before they turn into a beetle and we can continue this going and they've been eating our kitchen scraps uh, These beetles would naturally live on rotting wood or live on the forest floor eating uh, uh, Debris for leaf scraps and things like that. So they do a very effective job at eating um, Kitchen scraps um, so I figured since they'd be living in rotting wood naturally uh, that they would love uh, living in some gourmet fungus. So I've been feeding them uh, shiitake mushroom spawn oyster mushroom spawn uh, lion's mane mushroom spawn, and as long as the f uh, fungus is alive, it uh, is fairly resistant to bacteria and other molds. Um, so that's a plus. Uh, we don't want any other bacteria or molds uh, potentially growing on this food. I mean, I totally recommend cooking insects if you're going to eat them. Um, and I'm using these more for an educational purpose. Um, there is uh, a few uh, grassroots um, startups of uh, insect farming businesses popping up around the United States for human consumption. So I want to include that into my permaculture education. So I've been doing a lot of research on how somebody could start up a business around uh, my mushroom business. Uh, we already have one business starting up uh, where we have a friend that's utilizing red wiggler worms to uh, compost our mushroom blocks. Um, but I also believe that there's potential for uh, edible insects. So I've been playing around with crickets, um, uh, the ho tomato hornworms, uh, these darkling beetles, which there's some mating right there. They're just thriving in this in this uh, fungal compost. Uh, so they're going to just keep producing loads and loads of mealworms, uh, eating and living in uh, a sweet smelling, delicious tasting fungus. So I want to see an experiment with how that will affect. Uh, the quality of our insects. Um, so aside from that, we're keeping a br uh, separate culture of our insects for uh, just breaking down kitchen scraps and uh, feeding to our chickens. Um, so this is a self-harvesting technique. I just got this uh, um, strainer thing from from re local restaurant store, and I uh, strain out their substrate, and they tend to stay together. So I there's some still in here, uh, but I strained out most of their substrate. And a lot of them are just hanging out on there, which they've just been falling into this bucket through these holes. Um, and you can play around with them and push them through if, uh, if it starts to take a little bit longer. But this is a really easy way to get them uh, separated. Um, but what I'm going to begin doing uh, is keeping my breeding bins of uh, mealworm, of, the, of darkling beetles, above my bin of larvae and putting holes in the darkling beetle bin where they're breeding so whenever the little mealworms come out they're like really tiny small in your fingernail they'll just fall through into the uh, larvae bin uh, so that's a, e a way easier self-harvesting technique i didn't do that at first so i had to separate them this way um, and we also have our larger bins over there so it's way easier to separate them this way whenever some of them won't fall through um, through the uh, stages um, so yeah, playing around with uh, introducing these into different permaculture systems. I use them in my home effectively to increase the value of my kitchen scraps uh, and feed these um, crazy energized uh, chicks. I let them play around a little bit when I'm down here uh, outside of their cage. Um, for some reason, it's snowing uh, in March, so I had planned on having these guys outside right now, and um, unfortunately, they're not able to be outside. So um, I'd say it would be a little bit... Uh, longer, maybe a, uh, a week or so before we can get these guys outside. So, um, yeah, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, share on Facebook and Twitter, all your favorite permaculture blogs, uh, entomophagy blogs, uh, insect lover blogs, anything like that. Um, other than that, uh, we're just um, increasing the resiliency of our systems and increasing the resiliency of our life by teeming with life. Uh, so, just adding natural systems into our human systems. What would nature be doing? What would nature do?